Can I ask you how surprised you were to hear David Gold challenge Manuel Pellegrini to turn Declan Rice into a, an England international? Um, well, it's going to be pretty difficult if he's Irish. And he's given every indication that Ireland is where he wants to play. Yeah, because he's Irish. Where else would he want to go? A few to choice, Ireland or England. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Ireland. He's made you look a right knob. Hello and welcome to HITC Sport and I have been asked to make a video on Declan Rice. Or as I like to call him, the man who has now entered that deep dark recess of my soul. Especially reserved for Thierry Henry, Jack Grealish and Logan Paul merch. For anyone living under a rock for the past year, Rice is West Ham's 19 year old centre back. Who is now apparently considering declaring for England after three caps for the Republic of Ireland. What the f***? Another player decides, Oh, I'm English after all! Just go, alright? Just, just go for f**k's sake. This was more predictable than the ending to KSI vs Logan Paul last week. And the winner is both of your f**king bank accounts. This always seems to happen. I remember 10 years ago, we spent about two years trying to convince Stephen Ireland to play for us. Only to realise he was about as mad as Badgers. This is more like Jack Grealish all over again. Actually, do you know what? No, it's worse. This fella has actually played for the senior team. At least Grealish had the common sense to actually back out before he got an actual full cap. Rice has been playing under Martin O'Neill for over a year. There's no decision to be made. Declan Rice has played for Ireland was never in doubt. He's kissed the f**king Irish badge. Prediction and West Ham fans will not like to hear this. But by the end of his career, this fellow will have kissed so many badges, he'll be a big walking bag of f**king herpes. Look, it's obvious what's happened here, right? Rice has changed his agent and has clearly had him in his ear, telling him to switch allegiances. You're too good for Ireland. I mean, yes, the football we play makes Hollyoaks look exciting, but it's not about that. You should be proud to play for your country, not use us as a stepping stone to get a call up for a bigger nation. Look, all right, I'm not deluded. I get the fact he was born in England. He has English parents. He probably grew up wanting to be an English centre half. I get that. For God's sake, the only ties to Ireland he has are his grandparents, who might well be buried six feet under or stuck in a nursing home off the west coast of Galway, struggling to remember what fucking day it is. I have no problem if he wants to play for England, alright? Fair enough. Just don't play three friendly games for us. He started playing underage football for us when he was 14. I can kind of get him making a mistake back then. You don't even want to know what kind of a gob bean I was when I was 14. But he's old enough now. He know he should have known last year what country he won. Don't turn, don't play three games for us and then decide, no, I want to go be an English centre half. Like, is he not going to make enough money throughout his career? Oh, Christ, what, he's hardly going to end up down the back of Seven Sisters Road selling his bodily fluids for a bowl of cereal by the time he's 27 now, is he? I think he's going to be okay. Call me old-fashioned, but international football shouldn't be about just pumping up your f***ing bank account. I'll tell you now, do you know what's going to happen to this man if he declares for England? Absolutely nothing. He might as well start booking holidays to Marbs with Jack Grealish for the next five years, because they won't be going to any international tournaments. Oh, neither will Ireland, Irish guy. If UEFA and FIFA keep expanding their tournaments and letting half the f***ing world in, come on, 48 teams at 2026, if we don't qualify for that, a competition where they'll probably have Papua New Guinea versus Fiji, then we should probably just all f***ing pack it in and die. But look, if he had it in his mind that he was going to play a few friendly games for us, using us as an audition for England, that is an absolute disgrace. It's a fucking disgrace. That is a disgrace. How is this rule even allowed? That you can play friendly games for one country and then completely switch nations? No, like, I'm sorry, you know which nationality you are when you pull on that jersey. Which is why Diego Costa having cast for both Brazil and Spain in the space of five years is f***ing ridiculous. There needs to be serious changes to the rulings, lads. But not only that, maybe the FAI need to stop being so reliant on Englishmen with Irish grandparents. Because this sort of thing is happening more and more often now. When you look at the World Cup, you can see countries with players proudly bellowing out their national anthem with tears in their eyes. And then you look at us. When our team lines up, yeah, James McLean and Seamus Coleman are giving it welly. And then you get to Kieran Clark, Cyrus Christie and Harry Arter. And they just look like people who don't have a f clue what's going on. But instead of developing your own grassroots football in Ireland, instead of bringing through youth talent, our own f***ing league, we allow anyone who can trap a ball to board a flight to England at the age of 14 and then trawl through the British for anyone with a semblance of an Irish connection, no matter how tenuous or thin it might be. Do they have an Irish granny? Yes, but they haven't spoken to them in 15 years. Get them in the squad. Have they visited Wexford on summer holidays? That doesn't actually make them eligible for a call-up. I said get them in the squad. Have they seen an episode of Father Ted? Again, that doesn't make them eligible. Get them in the f***ing squad. Did they start drinking cans in a bush when they're 11 years old? Then they're Irish enough. Get them a f***ing 
jersey. Like on one hand, Wayne Rooney looks like a temporary hurler who got lucky, but on the other, the FAI go on cap in hand to England's boy wonder, asking him to line out alongside Clinton f***ing Morrison 15 years ago. I'm sure his grandparents were Irish and his girlfriend loved Westlife, so we're halfway there, right? No, it was f***ing embarrassing. Martin O'Neill said that Harry Kane, yes, Harry Kane, who honest to God sounds like a broken dishwasher when he speaks, once had a keen interest in playing for Ireland. Bullshit. Now, this was back when Kane was playing like David Nugent on tranquilizers, lumbering around the pitch for Millwall like a stoned giraffe, and permanently stuck to the benches for both Norwich and Leicester. So, of course, we were the plan B. For God's sake, it took Scott f***ing Hogan six months to realise that he wasn't getting the f***ing England team, before reluctantly dragging his heels into the Ireland squad. What have I done? Scott f***ing Hogan. Lass, I wouldn't trust him to mow my lawn. Now, fair enough, Kane is an Irish dad, but when it comes to the granny rule, we're just gonna get burnt by it time and time again. When these players turn out to be better than we thought before making their competitive debut. If you're English, you play for England. If you're English and shit, you pretend your Irish grandparentage matters to you and you play for Ireland. Now, it's not often I read from the gospel according to Joey Barton, especially when he's managed to live out three decades of life, gone to jail, written a book, and still can't seem to grasp with the proper spelling of your. It's only four letters, Joey, it's not that hard. But does he have a point? I mean, Matt Holland played 49 times for our country, scored in the World Cup. I'm not having a go at him here, but he also screamed out the lyrics to God Save the Queen at the top of his voice in a championship playoff final. Fair enough, you're English, go for it. Nothing wrong with that, but you're pulling on the Irish jersey at the same time. I mean, there's nothing wrong with English-born players who are genu who genuinely feel Irish. I come from Irish households, Kevin Kilbane, John Walter, Stephen Reid. Great Irishmen, proud to play for their country. Did not see us as plan Bs, always wanted to play for us, but I mean, <sighs> Look, Rice, you grew up in England, that's fine. I understand if you want to play for the country of your birth. I just don't understand why you played three games for us. We're a proud country, lads. We're not a f***ing X Factor audition for England rejects, all right? It's like when Jermaine Pennant, Jermaine f***ing Pennant, famous for doing f*** all in his career, except warming half of England's benches, telling the police he was Ashley Cole, and accidentally leaving a Porsche parked in Spain for six months. Honestly, God, if that man didn't have a modicum of talent, he'd be struggling to get a job down the local petrol station. Well, a few years ago, when he was 28, he came out saying he wouldn't mind playing for Ireland after all. I'm 28, I'm not getting any younger, and I'd like to play international football, whether it's with England or Ireland. I'd love to play for England, but it's just never happened. If I've got a chance to play international football with Ireland, I'm gonna take it with both hands. They've asked previously, and I said, I want to try and play for England. But it never closed the door on it. This is exactly what is wrong with the whole situation. We're not England's B team, all right? Or at least we shouldn't be. That's all I've got to say in the matter. I'm, I'm just gonna stop now. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna piss myself off even more about it. Uh, Rice, make your decision, but honestly, if you're having to think about it... Uh, just... It's not a good sign. If you really do want to play for Ireland, you shouldn't be deliberating over it, all right? That's all I have to say about it. I'm gonna say, if you don't declare for England at this stage, it's because you don't believe yourself you can get into that squad. Because I don't believe now that you feel truly Irish. So if you end up sticking it out with us after all this deliberation, it's because of your own lack of self-belief. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on the matter. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Have I gone completely over the top? Does no one really care? Should I have dedicated a whole video to this? Probably not, but it's just something that has really pissed me off this week. Is he even that good? I mean, like, this just shows how Desperate we are, lads. But lads, I mean, for Christ's sake, we've done our time. Like, I, we have sat through 33 caps of Paul McShane. Like, come on! Do we not deserve some defensive solidity now? But anyway, lads, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to get a like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.